PlayStation Portable owners rejoice. There's a new custom firmware that you can install on your device, and it works on every model of the PlayStation Portable. And best of all, you can install it right on your device with no PC required. Stick around. I'll show you how it's done. Special thanks to Kara Comparetto for providing these incredible piano performances of video game music. I have a link to her channel in the video description so you can check out her incredible music and subscribe to her channel while you're there. You don't need a PC to make this work, but you do need a memory card, and you also need wireless internet access for your PSP. There are some key things to check on your PSP before you get started. From the cross media bar at the settings tab, scroll down to the listing for system settings and select it with X. Your best plan is to put your PSP on wall power, but if you're gonna run the battery, make sure you come down to the listing here for battery information and select it with X to check the overall battery percentage. In this case, I have the battery fully charged and on wall power. Press circle to go back one level in the navigation structure. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and up one and you'll see a listing here called system information. Select it with the X button to verify the type of firmware that you currently have installed on your PSP. In this case, this system already has Pro C Infinity installed on it. So we're gonna to need to uninstall it in order to install the new ARC4 upgraded custom firmware. Press the circle button to go back, and then press the circle button again to go back to the settings tab on the cross media bar. Let's set up your Wi-Fi access on your PSP. Scroll all the way down to the bottom of the settings tab, and you'll see a listing here called network settings. Select it with the X button. From the list of choices, scroll down to the one that says infrastructure mode and select it with X. You'll see a create a connection option and a highlight on new connection. Press the X button on your PSP to start the new connection process. If anything is gonna trip up most people in this process, it's going to be trying to connect your almost 20 year old PSP to your modern Wi-Fi. First, you can try setting up a guest access account on your Wi-Fi network. If you go this route, make sure to set up the guest access to only allow 2.4G connections. And if all else fails, you can always try using your cell phone's mobile hotspot to connect your PSP to the internet. At the wireless LAN settings screen, select scan from the list of choices with the X button. What you see on screen isn't super high contrast, but what it actually is telling you here is that there's a wireless access point called YouTube demo that I've created in my home network. So I'm gonna select YouTube demo with the X button. There, that's better. Okay, once you've identified your wireless access point, press to the right on the D-pad to continue the process. Select the type of security you've set up for your Wi-Fi access point and enter the password if necessary. At the address settings screen, make sure that the highlight's on easy and press to the right on the D-pad. You can name your new connection whatever you'd like, but in this case, YouTube demo makes perfect sense, so I'm gonna leave it like that and press to the right to move forward. Verify your wireless internet connection settings on your PSP, and once you've confirmed them, press to the right again. Finally, to lock in these changes, press the X button to save your settings. Just to make sure everything went to plan, with the highlight on test connection, press the X button to select it. That white text on those gray backgrounds is some kind of ugly, isn't it? Once the test is complete, you'll see a confirmation message on screen. Now that you have everything set up on your Wi-Fi, press the circle button to go back one level in the navigation, then press it again to go back to the settings tab on the cross media bar for your PSP. It's worth taking a moment to take a look and see what's on your memory card that's inserted into your PSP, especially since you need to use it for the jailbreak process. Scroll over to the game tab, then scroll down to memory stick. Select it with the X button and take a look at what's already on your memory stick. In this case, there are some games dumped here from a previous video, but I think it's also worth taking note that Infinity is installed on here, along with the Pro-C update software. Once Pro-C and Infinity are removed from this system, it's restored to stock, and ARC4 is installed on it, we'll come back and delete these. Setting up the ARC4 jailbreak takes place through the internet browser. Slide over to the right to network, hover over internet browser, and select internet browser with the X button to launch it. Use the D-pad to navigate the highlight up to the top address bar and press the X button. Use the virtual on-screen keyboard to enter the following web address, psp.lucidgames.com. Note that Lucid is spelled with an S and not a C. Once you have the address entered, press the start button on your PSP. You'll be asked which internet connection you wish to use to connect to the website. In this case, it's YouTube demo and it's already highlighted, so I'll press the X button. This will take you to a really cool website called Lucid's PSP Portal. And this is where the magic of jailbreaking your PSP through your web browser takes place. If you already have custom firmware on your PSP, you'll need to remove it before you proceed. 
This is where the original firmware section comes in handy. Move over to it using the thumbstick and select it with X. The first listing underneath the title at the top of the web browser is called Chrono Switch Downgrader. You want to get this so that you can downgrade your firmware from custom firmware back to the original 6.61 official firmware. Use the thumbstick to move the pointer to download and press the X button on download. You'll get a please wait message and then you'll get a confirmation message asking if you want to download the software. Make sure the highlight is on yes and press the X button. Once things start downloading, don't press anything on your PSP until you see a confirmation message that says download complete. Once you see this message, press the circle button to go back to the list of available downloads. Directly underneath the Chrono Switch downloader, there's a listing for the official firmware versions for the PSP and PSP Go. The first listing under this title is the listing for firmware version 6.61. The one on the left is the one for the PSP models 1000, 2000, 3000, and Street. The one on the right is the listing for the PSP Go system. In this instance, I'm using a PSP 3000, so I'll bring the cursor over to it and select it with X to start the download. Again, you'll see please wait, and at the confirmation process, select yes to start the download. Through the magic of video editing, this download process goes pretty fast, but in reality, the PSP uses a pretty slow Wi-Fi standard from almost 20 years ago, so it's a pretty slow process. Don't touch anything and just let it download the official system software. Once you see the download complete message on screen, press the circle button to go back to the list of download choices. You'll need to go back to the main menu of the portal, but instead of pressing the circle button, which will close out your browser, move the pointer up to home in the top right corner with the left thumbstick and then press X. You've got everything you need to downgrade your firmware. Now come over to custom firmware using the left thumbstick and with the highlight arrow over it, press X. If you look underneath the title at the top of the browser window, you'll see a grouping of three listings for ARC. The middle one says ARC installer and it has a download text link next to it. Come down to this with the left thumbstick and with the highlight arrow over download, press X. Just like in the other steps, you'll see a please wait message and a confirmation message. With the highlight on yes, press X. Again, don't touch anything while the downloads are taking place. Just let your PSP do its thing. Then once it's done, press the circle button to go back to the downloads. Okay, now you can press the circle button to exit the browser because you've downloaded everything that you need. Press circle, and when the confirmation message appears on screen, select yes with X to close out the browser and go back to the cross media bar. Since this PSP 3000 already has Pro C and Infinity installed, they'll need to be removed before we can move forward with the ARC4 process. Go back to the game tab and memory stick and press the X button. Remember how we downloaded that Chrono Switch downgrader previously? Here it is. Highlight it on the cross media bar and press X to launch it. Okay, if you're looking at this screen and you're thinking, good grief, this is ridiculously difficult to read. Don't worry, you're not alone. I'm gonna jack up the exposure here so we can take a better look at things together. Just be aware it's gonna look really dim on your PSP. There, that's better. Now you can take a look at what's going on with Chrono Switch. As you can see here, it's found that Infinity is already installed and running on this PSP. So to remove Infinity, it asks if you want to proceed, and in this case, we obviously do, so I'll press X. You'll see a notification that it's going to try to downgrade from your custom firmware to version 6.61 of the official system software. Press X to continue. So there's one more admonition to read before you press X and continue. And let me say, you don't get to use cool words like admonition very often. Take advantage. Press X, and you'll be taken to the official system software installer for version 6.61. With the highlight on start, press the X button. Now it's just like any other official system software installer update. Press to the right, come down to accept and press right, then press the X button to start the install process. Just like before through the magic of editing, time acceleration is in play. No need to watch paint dry after all. When your PSP restarts, your settings and themes and so forth will all still be retained, but your system will now be on official system software 6.61. Okay, before you proceed with the ARC install, I recommend that you go back over to the Settings tab, go back to System Information, press the X button, scroll all the way back down to the bottom and up one until you get to the listing for System Information. At System Information, press the X button and just verify that you are in fact on version 6.61 of the official system software. No Pro C's, no Infinities, no nothing else, just 6.61, like you see here. Excellent. 
Press the circle button to go back one level in the navigation, and then press it one more time to go back to the settings tab of the cross media bar. Cool, now you're ready to install Arc. Press over to the right several times until you get back to the game tab of the cross media bar. If you're not already, come down to the listing for memory stick and press the X button to select it. In this case, the very first listing is the Arc installer. With it highlighted, press the X button. What the Arc installer does is it doesn't actually install Arc specifically, it installs three tools that are necessary to install Arc to your system. So it's basically an installer for installers. Yeah, it's got that hard to read text stuff again. Here you go. Okay, now you can see that it's actually installing files as soon as you run the Arc installer. Those files will be extracted to your PSP's memory card. Give the software a minute to do its magic and you'll see a confirmation message appear on screen notifying you that everything has been finished and that it's exiting back to the cross media bar. Okay, you've put in the work, now it's time. Make sure that the cross media bar is in the game tab with the highlight on memory stick and press X. Now instead of the Arc installer, the first listing here is called the Arc Loader. We're gonna run all of these in chronological order, starting with Arc Loader. Make sure it's highlighted and press X. Hey, the good news here is at least you can read this one. You don't have to press any buttons or do anything here. Just let it do its thing and it'll go back to the cross media bar when it's done. Next up, go right back into Memory Stick by pressing the X button. If you scroll down one listing directly underneath the Arc Loader app, you'll find a listing here called Arc Full Installer. With it highlighted, press X. Unlike the loader, this time there actually is something that you have to do. You have to press the X button to install the full version of Arc 4. Once it's done, you'll be taken back to the cross media bar. Okay, one more install to go. Go back into Memory Stick, scroll down past the loader and the full installer until you get to the CIPL flasher. With it highlighted, press X. Just like the full installer, the custom IPL installer needs you to press the X button in order to initiate the installation process. It takes it only a moment to take care of business, and once it's done, just like before, you'll be taken back to the cross media bar. A wise man once said, trust but verify, so let's make sure that the custom firmware from Arc 4 is actually properly installed on the system. Use the D-pad to scroll back over to the left until you get back to the settings tab in the cross media bar. Scroll down to the listing for System Settings and press the X button. Just like before, scroll all the way down to the bottom until you get to the listing one above the bottom for System Information. Once you're at System Information, press X. If everything went to plan, you'll see that you now have the Arc 4 custom firmware installed on your PlayStation Portable. There's one more thing though. You can go back to the memory stick in your PlayStation Portable device and delete some of the setup files in order to save precious space on your PSP storage. Go back to the cross media bar, scroll back to the game tab, down to memory stick, and press X. So there are definitely two things you can delete from the memory card. The first one is the official system software updater. I'm going to scroll down to it here, and once it's highlighted, instead of pressing X to launch it, press the triangle button to pull out the side cart menu. If you look in the side cart menu, there's a setting here called delete. If you scroll down to it with the D-pad and press the X button, you'll see a confirmation message appear on screen asking you if you want to delete this file. In this case you do, so select yes. You can also go back and delete the chrono switch downgrader in order to save space on your memory card. With it highlighted, press triangle, come down to delete, and select yes with X to delete the chrono switch downgrader. You might, however, consider leaving the ARC installation files on the PSP memory card just in case you need them to repair a firmware install down the road. Hey, did you happen to notice when you looked at the memory stick info on this PSP 3000, it had 114 gigabytes of available space? Learn how to use micro SD media with your PlayStation Portable with this video shown on screen and linked in the description and pinned comment.